Thanks very much, everyone. So we're all here to talk about technology. And the most advanced technology in this room, it's not our phones, it's not our computers, it's you. It's you, and it's you. The most sophisticated technology on the planet is life. What I want to talk to you about in the next 10 minutes is how we can use technologies like artificial intelligence to harness evolution and to build new life. Before I can do that, I need to talk a little bit about sequence space. So here, who here has either had their genome sequenced or knows somebody who has? OK, a surprising number of you. Right, their DNA sits in this blue circle of sequenced life, which is the tiniest fraction of all of the life that currently exists on Earth. So this pink circle includes sharks and llamas and everything else that's alive. But this circle is the tiniest fraction of all life that has ever existed on Earth. So these are the dinosaurs, the dodos, everything that's both living and extinct. And this is the tiniest fraction of all the potential life that could exist. So this is where your dragons live. And this is the tiniest fraction of all of the potential DNA sequences. And engineering life simply comes down to how do you search this space? And if you can search this space, you can cure all disease, and you can build the most sophisticated devices from the nanoscale up. Charles Darwin, 159 years ago, published on The Origin of Species. What he was actually publishing on was a description of the four first autonomous recursive process that didn't require any human intervention that gave rise to both knowledge and technology. And though Darwinian evolution is amazing, it does have its limitations. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. This guy's out fighting for world peace. Um, this is the new Vitruvian man. Anyway, the, the limitations of Darwinian evolution, um, if you've ever noticed a human is born with an oversized head. Humans have to compromise between being born and being intelligent. We have to compromise between speaking and eating, which is a propensity to choke ourselves. We've got far too many bones in our feet because we evolved to climb trees. Darwinian evolution is a non-optimal process. But through empirical computation, we can start to generate, autonomously generate, new biological solutions to interesting problems. And if you can do this, you can cure disease. So with empirical computation, you've got to take a process that previously completely was conducted in the physical domain in the sense of Darwinian evolution and partition it out. Partition it into the world of atoms and the world of bits. And in the world of atoms, you can generate hypotheses. And in the world of bits, you can test them. But you've also got to be able to traverse these two different worlds. And the most exciting technology that has come about in the last 30 years has been the unparalleled development of DNA synthesis and sequencing technology that enables us to jump between these two very different domains very rapidly. So to put this into perspective, at Lab Genius, we can physically create 10 trillion unique DNA sequences in the physical world. So going from that infinite search space down to 10 trillion. We can jump from that hypothesis generation world to the physical world, 10 trillion unique experiments. And with DNA sequencing, you can rapidly pull back 20 million. So now we have this incredible ability to jump between these two different domains where we can hypothesize and we can test. But you also have to be able to move within your domain. And that's where the power of compute comes and the power of robotic automation. So what is an empirical computation, uh, what is an empirical, empirical computation engine actually look like? Well, here's a picture of our office where we have on one side the world of atoms and the other side the world of bits. And we view this office space, which we, we sort of built specifically around the idea of the empirical computation engine, to be a computer. And in like in the early days of computers, you have this rapid process of miniaturization. This computer has to be pretty big because you have to fit humans inside it. But the humans inside this computer are in the process of building it out. And our vision is to build a fully autonomous evolution engine where we will be able to jump from the world of hypothesis to the world of, the world of thoughts to the world of atoms um, instantaneously, recursively, and very quickly. 
So this is what hypothesis generation looked like in traditional science. You have to be able to linguistically capture your ideas. It's compromised by the duration of your short-term memory and how you can abstract complex ideas into language. This is what hypothesis generation looks like in the age of AI. You can't possibly comprehend it. The way in which it can capture the nuance of life without that requirement for abstraction is exquisite and allows us to understand the world in a deeper way. Traditional experimental execution was a scientist at a desk with a pipette. Now through automation, you can completely automize that hypothesis testing process. So what can empirical computation engines be used for? At Lab Genius, we're using our empirical computation engine to develop radically new proteins to cure disease. I wanted to leave you with a final thought. If you abstract the empirical computation engine into this schema, you can quickly see that it can be used to tackle any real world problem that you can't model in silico, but you can generate high throughput experimental data cheaply. And that's really exciting because this schema, this, this whole branch of empirical computation will be deployed against all of those problems in the years to come and are now. So I want to just finally say thank you to the Lab Genius team, many of whom are here today and who are doing all of the hard work that, that I presented on and say if there's anyone in the audience who is or knows an incredible full stack engineer, please come and talk to me. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much.